If you're a fan of war movies, choosing to watch M.A.S.H. is a must. It's not just any war comedy TV series, it's hailed as America's top choice. M.A.S.H. served as the starting point for famous actors, including the talented Alan Alda, who played the role of Captain Hawkeye Pierce. Oh, sorry, baby. Major to you. Why, sorry, Major Baby. Alan Alda himself felt incredibly lucky for the immense popularity of his character. However, behind the scenes, there was a different story unfolding. Tensions and conflicts among the cast members created an uneasy atmosphere. Nothing going on. They should let us go home. Are you curious about what went on behind the scenes of this movie? And interested in learning about the fascinating life of Alan Alda? You definitely don't want to miss this video as we unravel the only co-star who truly hated Alan Alda on M.A.S.H. M.A.S.H. History of this groundbreaking show. M.A.S.H. The fascinating mix of cleverness and drama that earned a special place in TV history. Think of it as a big nod to the stunning skill of storytelling. This awesome show happened during the Korean War, and it didn't just get a ton of viewers. It changed how TV shows were made. While the stories on screen kept millions hooked, the ones behind the scenes about the cast and the unexpected stuff are just as interesting. Some of these mysterious tales, not everyone knows, even the superfans, they add an extra layer of mystery to the show's legacy. It goes beyond what you see on camera, digging into the intricate stories that made this series iconic. When you look back at TV history, some shows stand out way beyond their time, leaving a mark on how people see things, M.A.S.H. is one of those shows, a great example of mixing humor with drama, finding just the right balance. Knowing the historical background is key to understanding why it was such a big hit and how much it influenced the people who watched it. M.A.S.H., which stands for Mobile Army Surgical Hospital, comes from a book by Richard Hooker in 1968. It's a novel about three army doctors, and Hooker, along with writer W.C. Hines, wrote it. The book is like a funny critique of the Korean War, and what the medical staff went through. The story follows a group of surgeons dealing with the chaos of war, with both crazy and touching moments. Turning this gripping tale from pages to the small screen was a bit of a risk, but it paid off. In 1972, when M.A.S.H. first showed up on TV, it was a big deal. American television was changing, and this show was part of that exciting transformation. As the Vietnam War stirred up strong feelings and divided the American people, M.A.S.H. came into the picture during a time of political unrest, doubt, and a widespread desire for peace. It told a story that hit home for its audience. Even though the show is about the Korean War, the challenges faced by its characters reflected the feelings of the people watching it at the time. What's cool is that, despite being set in the past, the show didn't push viewers away. Instead, it brought them in, making them laugh and cry, sometimes at the same time. With its great stories, memorable characters, and smart writing, M.A.S.H. quickly became a regular part of American households. People eagerly waited for each episode not just for fun, but also for its thoughtful look at war, human connections, and the mix of emotions in tough situations. M.A.S.H. was a huge hit in terms of viewership. Each episode got high ratings from viewers of all ages and backgrounds. The final episode in particular broke records and became the most watched TV episode in US history, with around 77% of the public tuning in. That's a big deal, especially for a non-sports event on American television. These amazing numbers show that the show wasn't just entertaining, it had a deep emotional connection with its audience over its 11-year run. The show stayed true to itself while changing over time, keeping things fresh. M.A.S.H. wasn't just a hit in the U.S., it found fans worldwide, airing in many countries and leaving a lasting impact as a global phenomenon when we look back on it. M.A.S.H. was way more than just a TV show. It was like a big deal in the TV world. It wasn't just entertaining, it was kind of like a movement. For lots of people, it felt like a reflection of the stuff happening around them. In this show, they mixed funny stuff with serious stuff about war, showing how crazy and sad it could be. It didn't just make people laugh, it made them think. That's why it's still considered a classic that never gets old. The Rivalry Between Alan Alda and Mike Farrell This movie series didn't just change the game on TV, it also let actors show off their talents in a big way. Alan Alda and Mike Farrell, 
two important actors on the show, had this friendly competition thing going on behind the scenes. Surprisingly, this rivalry wasn't about causing trouble. It made the show better. Alda and Farrell worked together to make the characters click on the screen. These two guys put their stamp on their characters throughout the show. Their friendly competition was more than just being buddies. It pumped up their performances. This competition even had a role in shaping one of the most unforgettable episodes, Preventative Medicine. In that one, Farrell's character, BJ, did something unexpected. Farrell thought it made sense for the character, but it didn't quite match the vibe of the show. Even though they didn't always agree, the actors found a way to work things out, and the script got a makeover to fit the show's overall vibe. The Alda and Farrell friendly rivalry wasn't just for show in one episode. It lasted the whole series. Both of them pushed each other to do their best, thinking that a bit of competition would make the show even better. And you know what? It worked. Their on-screen chemistry grabbed people's attention and played a big part in making the show a hit. Even when some other actors had a bit of a tough time, Mike Farrell stayed committed to his character. He always tried to give his best and help out his fellow actors. Working together with Alan Alda, they created something special that made M.A.S.H. one of the best shows on TV. If you're just starting to watch the show, the awesome teamwork between these two actors shows how powerful it is when people work together and get creative on TV. Co-star Gary Berghoff Besides Mike Farrell, another familiar name is Gary Berghoff. Gary's journey to stardom began when he got the role of Corporal Walter Radar O'Reilly in the original MASH film directed by Robert Altman. His portrayal of the lovable character was so captivating that he continued playing Radar in the subsequent TV series becoming a key part of the show's success. Berghoff devoted seven seasons to M.A.S.H., securing his place in television history. However, his departure in 1979 left fans and the industry puzzled, sparking a cascade of rumors and speculations. Contrary to the sensationalized stories surrounding his exit, the real reason behind Berghoff's departure was a mix of personal and professional factors. Despite the immense success of the show, Berghoff found himself dealing with exhaustion and burnout. This was one of his first ventures into acting, and the long hours and high-pressure environment took a toll on the relatively new actor. The strain intensified as he faced a divorce during this period, attempting to balance the challenges of his personal life with the demands of his hectic work schedule. Adding to the complexity, Berghoff's relationship with certain cast members, especially Alan Alda, became strained. Reports suggest that working alongside Alda, who played the central character Hawkeye Pierce, was a major stressor for Berghoff. Their onset dynamic was tense, and it became apparent that the two actors didn't get along. Berghoff was reportedly the only co-star who harbored animosity towards Alan Alda during the show's run. Commute between California, where the show was filmed, and his family home in Connecticut presented another challenge for Berghoff. Fueled by a commitment to prioritize his family over his career, he ultimately made the difficult choice to depart from M.A.S.H. So when Gary Berghoff decided to leave the famous show, it marked the end of his time on it. But that didn't mean the end of his whole career. After M.A.S.H., Gary Berghoff kept working in movies and TV. He even went back to his famous character by playing Radar again in the TV show Walter, a spin-off of M.A.S.H. However, this spin-off didn't do as well as the original show. Even with all the challenges and talk about why he left M.A.S.H., Berghoff kept going in his career until he officially stopped acting in 2010. He left behind a legacy that goes beyond just being known for his role as Radar O'Reilly. Co-star Wayne Rogers Wayne Rogers, who played the beloved character Trapper John McIntyre, left an unforgettable impact on both the M.A.S.H. cast and its audience. Trapper John, known for his cleverness and charm, stood out as one of the most memorable characters in the show, making Wayne Rogers a fan favorite. The success of the spin-off series Trapper John, Maryland, emphasized the enduring popularity of the character. However, Wayne Rogers' departure from M.A.S.H. during its third season left fans puzzled. The show failed to adequately address Trapper's exit, and behind the scenes, a contract dispute emerged as one of the main reasons for Rogers' departure. Surprisingly, 
Rogers hadn't even signed a contract when he decided to leave. He was dissatisfied with the direction his character was taking, feeling that Trapper John had been reduced to a mere sidekick role. His discontent, coupled with a desire for new and more interesting acting opportunities, led him to explore other projects. Despite Wayne Rogers' departure being a significant loss for M.A.S.H., creating a void keenly felt by fans and the cast, he found solace in reprising the role of Trapper John in a more substantial capacity on the successful spin-off series, Trapper John Maryland. This move allowed him to showcase the character in a way that aligned more closely with his vision. Leaving M.A.S.H. didn't mark the end of Wayne Rogers' illustrious career. Eager to pursue diverse opportunities, he delved into acting roles that offered more complexity and depth. In addition to his acting career, Rogers had interests in producing and directing, paving the way for new professional ventures. Despite leaving MASH, Wayne Rogers continued to contribute to the entertainment industry, remaining active in film and television until his retirement in 2003. Aside from his achievements in the entertainment world, Wayne Rogers also delved into business and gained recognition as a respected investor and financial commentator. His passing in 2015 marked the conclusion of a diverse career that had a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. After his death, his co-star Alan Alda, who faced challenges with Rogers on set, expressed gratitude for their collaboration. He acknowledged the mutual respect they held for each other despite the difficulties they encountered while working together. Alda's acknowledgement highlighted the enduring impression Wayne Rogers left, not only as Trapper John, but also as a respected colleague in the world of television and beyond. Wayne Rogers' legacy extended beyond the screen, leaving a mark not only as a talented actor, but also as a multifaceted individual who made a significant contribution to both entertainment and business. Larry Linville, the lone co-star who genuinely disliked Alan Alda on M.A.S.H., was reportedly the actor who played Frank Burns. His depiction of Frank Burns left a lasting impact on the show's legacy, even though the character wasn't always fondly remembered. Recognizing the challenging nature of the role, the actor intentionally made Frank Burns as unlikable as possible. Despite the character's lack of charm, his performance showcased his acting skill, bringing depth to an otherwise unpleasant character. According to the actor, Frank Burns was a deeply insecure individual with a desperate need for approval and appreciation from others. This insecurity, coupled with a constant yearning for attention, resulted in a character so disliked that fans would occasionally send angry letters about him. Embracing the challenge, the actor portrayed Frank Burns as someone perpetually seeking validation, adding layers to the character's complexity. He credited the writing team for providing her with the material to create such a memorable character. Despite the character's unlikable traits, the actor cherished the opportunity to work alongside co-stars like Alan Alda, whom he held in high regard. One of the standout features of Frank Burns, and perhaps one of the most memorable aspects of his performance, was the character's absurd laugh. The actor revealed that he personally came up with this distinctive laugh, aiming to make the character memorable beyond his irritable personality. The obnoxious laugh, resembling the sound of a goose honking, added a unique and unforgettable element to Frank Burns. Despite the character's lack of popularity, the actor's portrayal received widespread acclaim from both fans and critics. For his exceptional work on the show, Larry Linville received a nomination for an Emmy Award, recognizing his outstanding performance in the challenging role of Frank Burns on M.A.S.H., Beyond his time on the iconic show, Linville had a successful career in the entertainment industry, appearing in many TV shows and movies. Yet, it's his portrayal of Frank Burns that stands out as his most iconic role. Linville's ability to bring depth, complexity, and nuance to a character like Frank Burns, who might have seemed merely unlikable at first glance, is truly remarkable. His portrayal, complete with the unforgettable laugh he created for the character, has earned a lasting place in television history. It goes to show that sometimes the most difficult characters are the ones that leave the most enduring impressions. In the end, Larry Linville seemed to have the last laugh, reminiscent of a goose honking, echoing through the lasting legacy of M.A.S.H. 
His portrayal of Frank Burns not only showcased his talent, but also proved that challenging characters can make a significant and lasting impact on the audience. Alan Alda with dog tags and combat boots. In a fascinating peek behind the scenes of acting, Alan Alda offers an insightful view of the strong bond actors develop with their characters. During a phone call in October, Alda shared a common saying in the acting world, suggesting that actors truly become their characters only when they step into the character's shoes. For Alda, these symbolic shoes were represented by combat boots and dog tags, crucial elements that transformed him into the irreverent yet skilled Korean war surgeon, Hawkeye Pierce, throughout the 11 seasons of M.A.S.H. The combat boots and dog tags became inseparable from Hawkeye Pierce's persona, holding deep significance for Alda. When the show concluded in 1983, watched by a record-breaking 106 million viewers, these items stood out as the only mementos he chose to keep. The combat boots, a regular issue from the Army, accompanied Alda from the 1972 pilot to the historic 1983 finale. Inside the boots, the words Hawkeye were inscribed in black sharpie, capturing the essence of the character in a tangible form. The consistent presence of these boots throughout the show's lengthy run added an authentic touch to Alda's portrayal. The revelation about the dog tags adds another intriguing layer to this connection. One might assume the tags would bear fictional details about Hawkeye Pierce, like his hometown or next of kin. However, reality surpasses expectations. The dog tags weren't mere props. They were authentic World War II artifacts that belonged to two real soldiers, adding a unique and unexpected dimension to the connection between Alda and his iconic character. The soldiers, Morris Levine, mistakenly spelt as Morris's by the Army, and Harry Davenport, come from different backgrounds, Morris being a black man from the Deep South and Harry a Jewish man from New York City. Until Alan Alda decided to auction the dog tags for a good cause, the true identities of these men were unknown to the general public. The auction of the dog tags, which fetched $125,000 from an anonymous American buyer, brought attention to the remarkable history behind these artifacts. Morris Levine and Harry Davenport, whose names were never explicitly mentioned on the show, now stand as a testament to the authenticity and unexpected depth that Alan Alda brought to his iconic role as Hawkeye Pierce. At 87 years old, Alan Alda, also the host of the podcast, Clear Plus Vivid with Alan Alda, reflects on the significance the dog tags held for him during his time as Hawkeye Pierce on M.A.S.H. Speaking from his Long Island home, Alda provides a personal account of the importance of these dog tags. Recalling the first time he encountered the artifacts, Alda vividly paints a picture of the moment he laid eyes on the dog tags. This pivotal experience occurred as he prepared to film the first shot of the pilot episode. Interestingly, the dog tags immediately captured Alda's attention, drawing him into a contemplative exploration of the names inscribed on them. The realization that these were the authentic dog tags worn by real soldiers added a profound layer to his connection with the imaginary circumstances of the show. The revelation for Alan Alda went beyond the typical props used in TV shows. The genuine nature of the dog tags he discovered immersed him even deeper into the world of M.A.S.H. Those moments in his dressing room, where he put on the dog tags provided by the costume designers of the show, turned into thoughtful pauses for Alda. As he fastened the tags around his neck, he couldn't help but think about the men represented by these tags and where they served during the war. What added an extra layer of mystery and emotion to Alda's reflections was the absence of a second tag which was different from the usual pairs. The singular presence of each tag left him wondering about the fates of these men. Were they still alive, or had they succumbed to the hardships of war? In those dressing room moments, Alda's musings reflected a genuine curiosity and respect for the unknown soldiers behind the dog tags. The lack of detailed information about these men beyond their names deepened the mystery and allowed Alda to connect with the broader narrative of sacrifice and service woven into the fabric of M.A.S.H. During a reflective moment, Alan Alda expresses a sense of retrospective curiosity, 
wishing he had been more inquisitive about the personal artifacts worn by his fellow MASH cast members. It was particularly surprising for him to learn that Jamie Farr and Mike Farrell, who portrayed Corp Max Klinger and Captain B.J. Hunnicutt, respectively, had worn their dog tags on the show. This discovery added another layer of personal connection to the characters and their portrayals on M.A.S.H. Alan Alda shares that the idea of wearing his dog tags never crossed his mind back when he was working on M.A.S.H. Even though Alda had served in the Army for six months on active duty at Fort Benning in New Jersey, and another 18 months in the reserves from 1956 to 1958, the thought of incorporating his dog tags into his character's wardrobe didn't occur to him. This is in contrast to the surprising revelation that his co-stars, Jamie Farr and Mike Farrell, had chosen to use their dog tags for their characters. Interestingly, Alda admits that he never had discussions with his co-stars about their dog tags, nor did he share the personal connection he had with his own. The idea of collectively examining and discussing the authenticity of their dog tags, something that Alda now feels would be a natural inclination for him, didn't happen during the MASH days. In his reflections, Alda unveils a shift in perspective, shaped by his current role as a podcast host, where curiosity plays a significant role. As a podcast host, Alda actively exercises his inquisitiveness while interviewing people. He acknowledges the irony that during the MASH era, he didn't think to engage in discussions about dog tags with his fellow actors. Alan Alda is widely recognized for his iconic portrayal of Captain Benjamin Hawkeye Pierce, an Army field surgeon, in the acclaimed TV series M.A.S.H. Behind the Scenes Secrets The brilliance of M.A.S.H. wasn't just about what the viewers saw on the screen. It was also about the countless decisions, incidents, and surprises that happened behind the scenes. From secret plot choices to unexpected appearances by Hollywood's biggest stars, the show's backstage stories were just as rich as its televised narratives. One of the most surprising decisions made by the creators was to keep the tragic death of Henry Blake, played by McLean Stevenson, a secret from most of the cast until the very end. This wasn't just a random choice. The producers wanted genuine, raw reactions from the actors when they learned about Blake's sad fate. And that's exactly what they got. The impact of this unexpected revelation was clear in the moving performances, capturing the deep shock and sorrow that mirrored the feelings of millions watching from their homes. This skillful blend of reality and fiction heightened the emotional weight of the episode, making it one of the most unforgettable moments in television history. Another beloved behind-the-scenes story revolves around Radar, played by Gary Berghoff and his teddy bear. This iconic prop wasn't just a prop, it had a history. Discovered in the 20th Century Fox Studios, it had been in their prop inventory since at least 1952. The bear gained so much popularity and significance that it ended up in an auction in 2005, fetching a substantial sum of $11,800. The lasting impact of a simple object tells a powerful story about how deeply the show influenced people. M.A.S.H. had a unique charm that attracted some of Hollywood's brightest stars, even if it was just for brief appearances. Ron Howard, known for his roles in Happy Days and later as a successful director, stepped onto the set as a Marine suffering from severe battle-induced myopia. His presence added a notable touch to the episode considering Howard's rising prominence in the entertainment world at that time. Similarly, Leslie Nielsen, famous for his comedic roles in movies like Airplane and The Naked Gun series, showcased his versatile acting skills in a more serious role on the show. His portrayal of a stoic, duty-bound officer highlighted his broad acting range, reminding audiences of his pre-comedy days as a serious actor. Before becoming a star in movies like Dirty Dancing and Ghost, Patrick Swayze made an appearance on M.A.S.H. His role as an injured soldier with leukemia was both touching and memorable, giving a glimpse of the star's potential and future successes. The decision of such well-known actors to join M.A.S.H., even if just temporarily, emphasized the show's magnetic appeal. It wasn't just another television show, it was a cultural phenomenon that both established and budding actors wanted to be a part of. Adding to the show's history is a delightful nugget, the existence of a time capsule. As the series came to a close, 
cast members decided to bury a time capsule on the set, filled with meaningful mementos. This act symbolized the sense of camaraderie and shared experiences among the cast, creating a tangible link to the show's legacy. Yet this time capsule met an unexpected fate. A construction worker unearthed it much earlier than anyone intended, just a few months after its burial, cutting short this romantic gesture. What makes M.A.S.H. truly beautiful isn't only found in its episodes, but in the captivating stories that shaped its creation. The hidden secrets, the deliberate choices, and the unexpected occurrences all blended to turn the show into a multi-dimensional masterpiece. It's celebrated not only for its on-screen content, but for the countless tales that bubbled beneath its surface, creating a rich fabric of behind-the-scenes anecdotes. M.A.S.H. isn't just a TV series. It's a treasure trove of untold stories that add a layer of magic to its legacy. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. At Southern Connecticut State University's John Lyman Center, the vibrant Alan Alda, famous as Dr. Hawkeye Pierce, enthralled the audience with his infectious passion for life and knowledge. With seasoned storytelling grace, Alda recounted a pivotal moment etched in memory a medical crisis in South America while filming Scientific American Frontiers for PBS. Pacing the stage deliberately, he took the captivated audience on a spellbinding journey through his post-medical emergency life. Seized by intense stomach pain, Alan Alda found himself immobilized on a sofa and later rushed to the hospital in an ambulance. A bowel obstruction threatened his intestines, demanding urgent surgery for survival. In an extraordinary blend of reality and his TV roles, Alda astounded the surgeon with his casual grasp of the impending procedure, referencing his on-screen surgical experiences. This unexpected connection added a surreal layer to the narrative, deepening Alda's gratitude for life and fueling his thirst for diverse experiences. While his lecture skipped M.A.S.H. tales, the audience remained captivated. Alda's shift to his love for science and advocacy for clear explanations wrapped up the engaging talk with Flair. In a Q&A session, he shared anecdotes from his early life, military service, and experiences on M.A.S.H. without mentioning the only co-star who truly hated him in the movie. Perhaps there is none. With humor and charm, Alda debunked the myth of being a gunnery officer in the military, admitting to running a mess tent, humorously tied into the movie's story. In this unforgettable evening, Alan Alda seamlessly blended humor knowledge and wisdom from a brush with mortality, leaving the audience inspired and enriched. But let us know your thoughts about the only co-star who truly hated Alan Alda on M.A.S.H. in the comments section. Alan Alda's Connection to the Military Alan Alda's connection to the military goes beyond the TV screen, as he served as an army officer in South Korea from 1956 to 1958, shortly after the Korean War. After finishing ROTC and graduating from Fordham University in 1956, Alda received a commission in the Army Reserve and was stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia. He then served as an artillery gunnery officer in South Korea for six months before receiving an honorable discharge. Alda's time in the military had a significant impact on his portrayal of Hawkeye Pierce and influenced the overall theme of M.A.S.H., his experiences allowed him to interact with soldiers who had faced the harsh realities of war, adding authenticity and depth to his character on the show. Alda skillfully blended humor with the profound and often traumatic experiences of troops in Korea. As the series progressed, he drew parallels to the Vietnam War, bringing a thoughtful layer to the narrative. Under Alda's influence, M.A.S.H. found a delicate balance offering both comedic relief and a poignant reflection on the challenges faced by those in medical units. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.